On October 7th, 2013, Garry Kasparov announced his candidacy for FIDE president in Tallinn, Estonia, where the FIDE Congress is taking place. In front of more than a hundred delegates and officials, Kasparov explained his plans and introduced the members of his team. In ten months from now, he will try to remove Kirsan Ilyumzinov from his throne. The day after the reception, we spoke to Mr. Kasparov. First question, obviously, uh, why are you running for president? What is the biggest motivation for you to do this? I've been thinking about uh, changing the situation in the world of chess for quite a while. And uh, it's not an accident that I supported Karpov uh, three years ago, because I believe that there were great opportunities around us that have been missed. Uh, because the current video leadership and management uh, was not capable of grabbing these opportunities and uh, uh, building the world of chess uh, that our great game deserved. Um, and after Hante Mansisk, um, I made it very clear that I would be looking for an opportunity to pursue this change, but I wasn't sure at, at the time uh, whether I would do it myself or there would be somebody else. And uh, I've been working. Um, um, incessantly um, uh, trying to actually um, find the right formula to challenge uh, um, uh, FIDE's team in 2014 elections and eventually I came to the conclusion after talking to a lot of people and uh, meeting them around the world that uh, I would have to do it myself um, and I feel that uh, you know, with my energy, political and uh, business connections and reputation, I could uh, um, materialize these changes that a lot of people have been uh, waiting for. And uh, uh, I've got a lot of um, uh, support and encouragement uh, during the, the, the conversation with uh, federations uh, uh, in Europe, in Africa, in America, and uh, I'm in Asia, of course. And uh, uh, I feel that uh, it's the right moment to uh, make this bid and to capitalize on, on the positive trends uh, in global uh, uh, political, economical, uh, uh, cultural and technological uh, trends. In 2006, Bessel Koch lost the elections 96 to 54 and in 2010 Anatoly Karpov only just did one vote better. Um, so why, it's, it's a huge difference. Why do you think you have a chance and what do you intend to do differently? Uh, these campaigns, they, they, they look similar because of the results were uh, quite similar, but they um, uh, had very different, as I understand, a different um, uh, algorithm. I mean, Karpov's campaign, uh, since I was involved in this very, very uh, uh, deeply, uh, was built on the assumption that Karpov could carry a Russian vote. So it was, it was very spontaneous, so we didn't have much time, but uh, winning or losing Russian votes, which also uh, had profound effect on the uh, Hunter Mansisk, the venue for the, for the FIDE elections, and also psychological effect for many other federations was crucial. So uh, the fact that Karpov couldn't uh, manage to, to, win, to win this vote uh, losing this very complicated battle inside Russia, I think, uh, uh, decided, decided the elections. Uh, Bessel in 2006 uh, uh, had uh, um, uh, sort of a different approach. Uh, naturally, he expected that uh, Europe could be joined by, by uh, other continents, and there were some attempts to work out in uh, um, South America, in Asia, in Africa, but those were very timid attempts. They, there was no real um, program behind it. There was no real experience of, of working on the ground. So what brought these campaigns together is that they, they were both Euro, Eurocentric. So that's the Europe eventually stood alone and FIDE managed to keep control of other continents. So I mean, I learned a lot from both of them and uh, just recognized that we would need at least second continent to join Europe to make a, a, a proper bid uh, for, for FIDE presidency. Also, the fundamental difference of 2014 lectures from 2010 and 2006 that we have much louder voice from, uh, from the de developing world. This is not just, you know, people arriving at the, at the Congress at, at election time and just uh, listening to the, to, the, to the promises. They, they want 
uh, uh, to see results, and uh, they will help, they will help feed the responsible for the broken promises. So, and uh, uh, 2010 was the big year, a big harvest of promises that uh, were not fulfilled. And uh, the irony is actually, and this is that's um, listening to to Kirsan's speech uh, yesterday, and also just to looking at the uh, sort of the, uh, the structure of FIDE um, sponsorship uh, uh, packages. Uh, it's qu it's quite an irony that we have been accused. I mean, I say we Karpov and Kasparov, so being elitist and uh, not paying attention to the needs of the federations uh, in the developed world, in Africa, in Asia, in South America, and uh, uh, only you know taking only trying to take care of uh, our former colleagues of the professional world. Well, well, if you look at the and, and, and the FIDE results, and actually that was said by Lujan himself, I think 90 or 95 percent of FIDE money actually goes into the pockets of professional players. So a very, very little portion, you know, is assigned for, uh, for the developing world, for uh, chess and education programs, uh, and actually most of this money uh, uh, that has been assigned for these programs, I mean, never reach the, the uh, end, end uh, uh, recipients. So I already built, you know, a uh, pretty strong ground operation in America, Europe, and Africa, especially in Africa, based on the work of Kasparov Chess Foundation, with three centers in New York, Brussels, and Johannesburg, and people could see that it is happening. You know, just even, you know, before the elections, I succeeded in delivering goods and, and organizing programs that, frankly speaking, FIDE had to do years, uh, 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 several years ago. So that's why I think the mood is different. I mean, it doesn't mean that you know everything will change dramatically, but naturally people are just are far more selective, and they they mean they understand what they want, and they also can separate from the empty promises and and uh, real work on the ground. Actually, in his speech, uh, Kirsan also said that you were among the people who supported him in uh, in '94. Uh, what's your comment on that? Um, uh, I think that in 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 general, Kirsan's speech was reflecting facts correctly, but there was always certain minor details that could, you know, uh, uh, change the whole picture. I mean, if we go back, you know, this is, we actually met in 1990 when Kirsan, you know, just uh, uh, was not known at all, you know, showed up in, uh, in uh, our room, um, uh, uh, Azeri Consul in Moscow, where we left, where we left, it was my mother after, you know, we. Uh, had to leave, leave Baku, and he came up with a chess book, you know, he just, he wrote uh, some sort of chess book because he's a, probably the first category player, so, for kids, and he wanted me to write, to, 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 to uh, write the, um, uh, uh, yeah, the forward, something. So that's how we met, and after my match with Carpool in 1990, uh, uh, he actually organized this sort of consortium of buyers to get this crown that I sold and eventually distributed about three hundred thousand dollars by 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 exchange rate at that time, ten million rubles. So I, I distributed to Armenian refugees from 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 Baku. So that's that how we met. So and uh, then he became the prime the, the president of Kalmykia. And in ninety four, he was correct. That is that. But it's I mean there was no Karpo of course there because there was a conflict with the Russian Federation, and I supported Andrei Makarov. And Karpo was actually on the opposite side. So that's why Karpov couldn't be there in 1994. And uh, he correctly stated that it was Andrei Makarov, Mikhail Baitin, who was a Russian businessman who supported our, our efforts there uh, uh, by doing this uh, Soviet Chess Union and then the, the, the Russian Chess Union uh, for pro professionals. Uh, we uh, um, talked to Kirsan, we were in a list, because Kirsan organized the first, he was the first Russian championship uh, there. And uh, there were very generous prices by that time. And uh, Makarov asked him to support the Chess Olympiad, which uh, was hastily put together by by Russian uh, Chess Federation, just in 55 days. I mean, that's, that's probably the record. And then uh, when people, some people complain about the organization, but after Greece failed, uh, actually Makropoulos was in charge, failed to organize it. So we did it uh, uh, in Russia in less than in less than two months. And Kirsan was helping, providing you know some some support uh, uh, upon to Makarov's request. Uh, and then in 1995, he went to Paris and uh, did something that he was not asked and, and uh, I could remind him that Russian Chess Federation actually opposed uh, his uh, 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 flamboyant plan of taking over FIDE. And according to Kirsan and Karpov and Kampomanis, uh, it was decided on the spot. And Karpov first was 
sympathetic, but then soon changed uh, uh, his opinion. And uh, definitely in 1996, Nita Karpov and myself were very uh, um, uh, friendly to Kyrgyzstan's plans to ruin the world cha championship structure. So uh, also we just, you know, uh, a couple of things that to be reminded about 95-96 period. One of them is that uh, there was already an agreement about the reunification match. So that's why when FIDE is, is, praise, uh, uh, is, 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 is boasting its record of unifying the match and having only one champion, but doing it only 2006. So I could remind them actually they could do it in 1996. If not for this uh, brilliant idea of having a you know, knockout tournament, which was basically Kirsan's plan to eliminate Karpov, Kasparov, and world champions from the decision making process uh, of, of, of uh, the world championship cycle, this reunification could take place in 1996 because the decision was made under Kampamaras. So, uh, this new idea, which eventually failed because the people recognized that the world championship match. Is, is a unique, uh, unique uh, um, uh, um, event of its own, and uh, that makes the world of chess uh, so proud of for you know uh, hundred uh, more than you know hundred twenty five years. So uh, 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 this 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 event to be preserved. So um, by you know by uh, moving in in the knockout, I mean literally. Uh, uh, Kirsten Lundin have postponed the unification for for uh, ten years. Um, also, by the way, this is 1995. Uh, the, we we worked out with Campomanus in in the process of unification on on having chess in 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 uh, in uh, uh, the Olympic Games because Samaranch was very very sympathetic. And uh, as a matter of fact, you know, again, we have to ask why Fidi eventually. Uh, uh, stopped working there and they moved uh, headquarters from Lausanne to, to, to Athens uh, since, you know, they, they, they failed to make a proper uh, case to the, to the IOC, even despite, um, despite uh, Samaranch friendly, uh, friendly uh, um, feelings. Uh, the answer is that IOC, by its, by its practice, uh, uh, couldn't even consider an application from a sport that had divided championship. So in 1996, you know, it's just the decision to actually move move along with the with the knockout and uh, to stop unification process made the bid to IOC futile. Okay, back to um, 2013. It appears that uh, at least top level chess this seems to be in decent shape with a relatively stable world championship cycle. Many, many, many top events during the year. Can we say that FIDE at least did something right? Now again, it depends very much on, on, on how you evaluate the source of funding. So, uh, uh, yes, uh, we have to give them certain credit for finding you know, sponsors in, uh, uh, in a certain part of the world. But if you look at the nature of the sponsorship, I'm not sure that we can, uh, uh, we can say that this is a very stable income. Yes, Kirsan Elobzhinov has strong connections in Russia and in former Soviet Union, and through these business connections, he managed to bring pe people in. But even now, we just watch the presentation of Hunter Mansisk and the many events given to Hunter Mansisk. but according to Jeffrey Borg, I mean, the contracts are not signed, and they will be signed when it comes closer to the event. That's the way FIDE operates, and again, it works out when you have, you know, friends there and their business contacts, and maybe you do favor here, and they return you there, but FIDE is the only major sport organization that has no corporate sponsorship. So, and that's, that's, that's a fundamental issue. So we have, you know, uh, a empty shell called Aegon, you know, given the rights for 11 years for all the feed events. And, uh, you know, in, and where is IBM? Where is Coca-Cola? Where is Google? Where is Facebook? So all these talks that we would do it eventually, I mean, we know it's not going to happen. There were so many years of this, of, of this broken promises. And I know that, my former colleagues, you know, uh, they are very happy now because they are the greatest recipients of Kirsan's, you know, uh, 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 business activities and his, uh, his uh, generosity in, 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 in uh, uh, throwing money into these World Cups and other big events, while I think that the money could be, could be used much more effectively for supporting uh, small federations and chess and education uh, programs. But at the end of the day, again, yeah, I don't want, you know, uh, my uh, sort of fellow grandmasters to, to, to um, uh, be hurt 
uh, and, and the solution is just to make sure that both professional chess and uh, educational programs and the uh, small uh, uh, poor federations that everybody is satisfied is just to find corporate sponsorship. And here, FIDE has miserable records. Actually, it's no record at all. And I don't think that with, with the current international reputation of Kirsten Alimzhinov, there is a single chance that we ever see Google uh, uh, sponsoring chess if uh, there is no change in FIDE leadership. All right. In 2005, you quit chess to pursue a political career aimed, aimed basically against Vladimir Putin. And a few months ago, you, uh, you decided to stop traveling to Russia for fear of uh, criminal persecution for your political activities. Uh, this obviously is not an ideal situation for a presidential candidate. So my question is, in case you win the presidential elections next year, to what extent will you be able to con combine your work uh, uh, with your political career? Look, my, I, I was always very cautious, you know, in making comments about political career. Actually, I was trying to say that it's, you know, uh, you can hardly call it politics because the moment you say politics, people in America, Europe, uh, they always think about uh, registering political parties, uh, raising funds for the political campaign, doing debates, going to the elections. I mean, in Russia, it was all different. So it's... 2005, 2006 was a difficult time, but of course, by modern standards, 2013, there was, that was a vegetarian time. Still, you couldn't register a political party without Kremlin's permission. You couldn't have a, a proper participation in elections because you would not register as a candidate. You would not be able to raise funds. I mean, no Russian business, you know, could even dream of supporting uh, Gary Kaspar for someone like, you know, uh, who was challenging uh, Putin openly. So I said from the beginning that for, for me and for my colleagues, it was not a fight to win elections, but it was a fight to have elections. And I always treated my activities as the fight for human rights. Uh, because my p political ambitions in Russia, they were, if you more call political ambitions, they were um, not as well defined as in chess, which was quite difficult because in chess I was always uh, um, thinking about making the difference, but still having a clear goal. You have to win. So winning was just the ultimate target. So and uh, in Russian political game, uh, there was no clear definition of victory. So I think I accomplished a lot by bringing together different people and uh, and creating sort of a new algorithm of cooperation of Russian opposition, breaking uh, barriers between uh, 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 liberal groups and the uh, left wing radicals and nationalist groups and. Uh, uh, creating an agenda that is very much now a sort of an active agenda. Uh, the problem is that regime is, is much tougher, and that's why most of people who are actually sharing these this, this views and this agenda, they're either in jail or already uh, in exile. So um, I don't think that you know, I have to you know, pursue the same goal you know, as I did before, because I, I did what I could. And uh, there are many young people now, and I said it already a year ago, that the change in Russia should come, the real political change from people like, who are under 40. So um, I'm still happy to support them. I'm just, I'm writing articles uh, uh, quite regularly. I support Kasparov.ru, which is one of the most influential opposition websites. Uh, but uh, there's no need for me to stay there uh, in Russia because it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it carries too much risk uh, for my personal life and, and my professional obligations. And uh, I think that uh, if I win for the presidency, so uh, things may, may be sorted out. So I uh, understand that Russia is a very important political player in the, in the game of chess. But uh, to I, what extent is, is their vote, because you will also have trouble getting the Russian vote, actually. To what extent is the vote from Russia important in the whole election? Um, it was almost decisive, at, if not saying decisive in Hante Mansisk. Uh, it, it is still important, but in Tromsø, in Norway, it's just a vote of the regional power. So, and I uh, don't think that uh, uh, even if uh, Russian Federation uh, throws its way behind Kyrgyzstan the same way it did three years ago, which I don't know is whether it's going to happen or not, it remains to be seen, that's not going to have a decisive effect. So, by the way, counting votes, I don't count Russia. And I understand that, you know, uh, not having Russia on your side means losing few other votes, but my calculation shows that in Tromsø it will not have a decisive effect. Also, I would like to see a change, and uh, I, again, I would, it, I, I, 
guess that we, we have to wait before Russian Federation eventually decides about this position. You uh, know the top level chess very well, uh, you've been there for decades, uh, but how do you intend to help federations who don't even have an IM or, or, or a GM? Uh, how do you uh, transform your, your knowledge into uh, for that uh, area? No, I, I think that this is that's 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 the biggest goal because you know uh, at the end of the day it's uh, it's not about just simply now uh, creating new GMs or IMs but this is it's about expanding our our base at the grassroots and uh, the way I see fee, the development of feed is that's what I briefly mentioned yesterday in my presentation short presentation at the stage is that to and and it's 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 already written in our in our policy document is just to turn feed into, in, into giant social networks. So I believe that you know, uh, expanding the base and, and using modern technology to actually bring together millions of people in a database will help uh, eventually even a smaller even a smaller federations. Because if we have this massive database, so that's definitely be very attractive to sponsors, and uh, uh, it will it will make it easier for for. Um, uh, small or new federations, some of them are not small and has big potential, like in Africa, to attract new membership. Uh, what the, the, the relations between FIDE office, uh, uh, although I think that we will have you know, quite a distributed uh, uh, power around the world, because I believe that in the modern world you cannot have this one you know, head office that decides everything. Uh, we can distribute a lot of power for the regions, and when I say regions, it's not just you know geographically. Sometimes you have to look for uh, language and cultural ties, uh, and to to create different different affiliations. So there are a lot of creative work to be done. And I think that uh, if if we can bring new people or just work with those who are in place and are, are ready to 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 accept these new new realities, uh, I believe that you know these federations can prosper because I can bring. Uh, my political capital and, and connections in, in, in the corporate world. And uh, when you look at my ticket, you just you see that we have enough capacity to, 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 to work with the corporate world to secure the sponsorship. And then I expect people on the ground to do the job because I think it's wrong when FIDE lives at the expense of the small federations. It's quite, or all federations. It's quite amazing to hear the story uh, by, by Ilum Zhinev uh, boasting about millions and millions and millions of dollars, but at the end of the day, feed, feed officers get salaries, you know, from uh, uh, the federation payments. So eventually, in my view, federation should minimize uh, its its contributions to feed it, and 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 feed it to the contrary should guarantee the the regular flow of of, of capital uh, into into um, uh, uh, these new 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 developing new developing areas. What we have to receive in, in exchange is numbers. We, have, we want to see more more people because eventually the sponsorship success depends on, on the popularity of the game. If they can guarantee the popularity of the game, bring numbers, register uh, 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 new members, so I'm sure uh, FIDE under my leadership will be able to uh, bring corporate sponsorship tenfold of what, what we have now. Okay, two more questions. Uh, back in 2010, you supported Anatoly Karpov during his campaign. Uh, is Karpov going to be involved in yours? I haven't made any contacts with, with Anatoly. I hope that he will be sympathetic uh, towards my goal, but you understand it's a little bit difficult because politically we are you know, quite far apart, so he's a, he's a member of Russian parliament and I'm not going back. But I expect that the, the world champion of solidarity will uh, be as strong in 2014 as in 2010. There are people who say that you should have uh, continued your chess career because that's what you do best. And uh, uh, besides, you have stated uh, several times yourself that you are not proud of some of the things you did in the past or maybe related to PCA or GMA. GMA. And now, 20 years later, we could say that you are returning to chess politics. So why do you think uh, in 2014 you will be a good for your president? Uh, there are too many questions in one, actually, yeah. you know, because, you know, the 2005 decision, you know, was the uh, long, you know, it was not just spontaneous decision. I have been, I've been considering that for quite a while, just recognizing that I had to do something else in my life. So, again, making the difference means that, you know, you had to concentrate on something where you also feel um, excited. So, and I, I've been playing chess for my, my entire conscious life, uh, and I did a lot, so, and I was very proud of what I did, but... 
I didn't feel that I could make the same difference as before. Could I fight with younger players? I think I guess. I, I guess I could, but I didn't see any, you know, any real, you know, long-term plan for me to stay because I wanted to uh, do other things. And a part of uh, being engaged in, in Russian human rights fight, I have been uh, also uh, doing lectures, writing books. So I believe I found a good application for my intellect. So plus I built Kasparov Chess Foundation operation globally. So I I was I was preparing for for another life. And now. First time since you know I, I left chess, I have a clear goal. So just it's and I know what I want, and I know I have a game plan. So and that's why it's you know I can mobilize all the resources that I, I accumulated before into achieving this goal. Now going back to uh, 80s and 90s, I think I wouldn't I wouldn't put GMA and PCA you know in one sentence uh, divided only by comma. So that those are two different things. I think GMA was a good idea, and it was something that could work because the conflict of the 80s that some people just don't even remember that uh, it was um, uh, the conflict based on 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 my belief and shared by my colleagues that you know we could dramatically change for better the conditions for the professional chess um, if we could have the some of trade union solidarity and also to bring commercial sponsorship and i led this process and i think the gma at that time could succeed, but okay, there were too many internal conflicts. Actually, you know, uh, um, uh, propelled by the collapse of the Soviet Union, because suddenly at a time when the Soviet grandmasters and Eastern Bloc grandmasters could travel to the West, you know, it created a huge animosity, you know, uh, uh, among Western players who, who saw a great danger for something that they considered to be only there. So, and uh, um, GMA failed to force FIDE to enter the agreement. And I still believe I was right by demanding that we could uh, be uh, sort of an equal partner, I, but it's a long story, uh, uh, and I don't think we, 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 we can just or go over it in, 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 in a minute or so. One day maybe I would like to see you know, all this, 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 a proper, proper record of GMA to be, to be mentioned. And uh, I, I think it was not good. Uh, actually, it was, a, it was a, a negative development for chess that GMA failed. Now, PCA, that's another story, and I, here I, I, I uh, made a big mistake. I confess that it was a wrong move, but I believe that, uh, and that was some sort of the reflection of the 90, 1991 conflict within GMA, I believe that joining with Nigel Short, uh, who was the last pre president of GMA, I could actually uh, close the um, gap between East and West, so with the, uh, a Russian player and a Western player, we could actually create a new momentum. It's you know this is you can't fight the the the, the last the, the 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 last war so uh, and uh, it was very much the wrong assumption that we were still dealing with the east and west uh, uh, conflict uh, while it was a very different um, uh, dynamics in theater so uh, PCA was was a mistake and I I confessed it many times uh, also I think that you know uh, the fact that you know we couldn't do anything at that time. It's also a result of the total um, uh, so inept position of uh, my fellow grandmasters. So because they didn't want to fight for for any changes. Unlike in the in the eighties when when in GMA there was the solidarity in in uh, in 93, 94, 95, there was just you know like observer position. We play here, we play there. We don't care. The only positive thing that you know we could learn from the 94, 95 history. Only time in uh, uh, in the history of chess, a chess organization had commercial sponsor, uh, uh, Intel Europe. So for two years, we enjoyed you know uh, proper relations, commercial relations with one of the major international corporations, and I think it's a shame that we couldn't you know couldn't succeed in that. And uh, I did immediately after recognizing the mistake, I did immediately steps to reconcile with FIDE. And again, going back to Kirsan Illusion's appearance. I think it's 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 a pity that in '95 FIDE moved in the wrong direction uh, by you know uh, um, refusing to honor the agreement made under Campo Manus to to uh, um, have the reunification match and to look together for uh, for the corporate sponsorship. So I think that today in 2013 I have a lot of experience. I uh, learned from the past mistakes. 
uh, as a good botanic disciple, you know, I uh, used to analyze games, and I believe I know what was uh, what was done wrong in the past. I think that people are sick and tired of broken promises. They're looking for change. And also, I think the global momentum now is very much benefiting uh, my chess agenda. So it's all about uh, education, you know, social impact. It's about technology. It's about uh, uh, globalization. So all these factors, they, they uh, could make chess very successful. But in order to put them together, uh, you know, you need a proper interface between the chess world and, 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 and uh, the rest of the world. And I'm sure I'm the, the right person uh, to secure this connection. Thank you very much. Thank you.